The Pages application is where users will spend most of their time. It's where you will create new web pages as well as modify existing ones. Below the top menu bar, you'll see more options available. Firstly, this large left-hand panel is the site tree. This is where all UW-Green Bay websites exist, sorted alphabetically. You'll notice that if you click on any website, you'll be able to see it. However, there's this gray bar that reads, you are not authorized. You can request access to any website by contacting web development at webdev at uwgb.edu. The website for this exercise we're looking for is the Sandbox. The first thing you'll notice is the gray bar is gone, and that's because every content author has access to the Sandbox. It's a sort of testing ground for the entire web editing community. You are more than welcome to use this site for training or testing purposes. What we want to do is make the first page. So you want to make sure that Sandbox is selected, and you can see that it is based on this light blue highlight color, and that's over Sandbox. We will hit the plus icon at the top left corner beneath Edit. We have three options to create a page, but for now, we'll just create a normal page for this page menu item. There is only one template available to us, and that's already pre-selected. So the first thing we have to worry about is just naming the page. It's important to know that the page title will also be the URL, or how the website will render in the browser's URL bar. So if we go ahead and name this page, training page, then the way the public would access the website when it's live would be at uwgb.edu slash sandbox slash training hyphen page. It's important to keep in mind URLs when creating page names because that's what will tell the audience what the page will be about and we want it to be clear, informative page names so no one is confused. So now to create the page, click the green save button. Now our new page has been created in the site tree, and we can see that it's currently selected. And it pops up, there it is. On the right-hand side, we'll see the layout of the page, and each page within the uwgb.edu site will have a header menu at the top section, a menu or a list of pages within the current site on the left, and a footer at the bottom of the page. At the center of the page, we see a box, and this is where our content on the page will go. By clicking inside the box, we can see we can start to type and create a page. And before we dive any further into the edit box, let's take a quick tour of the other features we have available for this new page. Firstly, we just made a change to the page by typing in the box, so let's go ahead and click this green save icon. So now that we click save, we're free to click on any other page, close the tab, or shut down the computer without losing any of the changes we just made. If you don't click that save button before swapping to a new task, you could run the risk of losing the work you've created. Next, let's see how the page would look if it were live. And for that, we want to click this preview icon next to the edit one. While this doesn't look too much different, this is how the page would appear if we submitted it for approval and the page was live. There's still some work we could do, but say we are ready for it to be live and accessible to anyone on the internet. To start, we would need to go back to the edit mode. Uh, next to the save button, you'll see the undo checkout and check in. Kind of seeing this as an awesome workflow system that protects the web pages. Only one user has access to edit a web page at a time, but this way no one will be able to overwrite changes anyone else created. We liken the system to kind of checking out a library book. So right now our training page is checked out by us and no other user will be able to edit it during that time. If we wanted to change that, and let someone else edit the page, we would need to select the check in button. Notice how the checkout button now became available. Any user with access would be able to click this and check out button and edit the page. 
Now let's say the page is ready to go live. We would select the Submit for Approval button. I won't do this right now because the page isn't quite ready, but if it were, this is what we would do. And when it's clicked, a notification gets sent to the web development team, us, and we'll take a quick look just to make sure that the page is of university quality and meets the guidelines outlined in the web style guide that we touched on earlier. If everything looks okay, the page is published and becomes accessible. It's a quick process to get pages published, but if anything ever needs to be fast-tracked, be sure to contact us and we can get it on there right away. You'll notice in the site tree there are these icons everywhere. And that's just a quick look of the process we went over. So you can see here, the training, but training page that we made has this kind of red X over it. That means that it isn't live yet, or it's still within the system, and nobody has hit the submit for approval button to go to the workflow. Pages that have been submitted for a workflow and have been approved to go live have these green check marks. So if we went to uwgb.edu slash SAS day, then we would be able to see it. If it had that red X over it, that means it wouldn't be published. And if we try to go to that URL, we wouldn't see a page. Other items are these padlock items, which kind of deal with that check-in, check-out feature. So if we click on this Lolar page here, uh, you can see that our web student Lolar has this page checked out, so we wouldn't be able to edit the page. We'd have to either ask Lolar to check in the page to see if he's done with it, or contact web development to get kind of an executive override. The only other icon available here is this yellow diamond, and that means that the page has been published, or we could go to RN2BSN, and the page would be available, but a user has modified this content inside the system to have new information that hasn't been submitted for approval yet. So there is the live, not live, and live with changes. Uh, and this means that it's a checked out page. So you can see you can hover to get a quick look of what's going on. So let's quickly go over some of the other functions available within the pages application. You can see that here is the trash icon, and this is how we get rid of the page. So we'll want to make sure that the training page is selected, and then we'll hit the trash icon, and it'll make sure that you know we're ready if we want to delete it. Uh, we're not, so let's hit cancel. Uh, next to that is the copy icon, and while it may sound enticing, we encourage users to avoid using the copy feature, and instead just create a new page and copy and paste all the original content from the first page into the second. Uh, if you copy a page in Kenneco CMS, it will copy all the information from the original page, including page name and page URL, which creates some complications. If you ever come across a site or a URL with the hyphen parentheses one, uh, that's because we weren't able to change the URL and we copied that page and things get a little hairy. It's just better if you create a new page and copy and paste all the uh, we have a knowledge base article on the IT website on how to do that, and it'll avoid all the problems. The next feature is the move feature. Uh, you can see that we have three icons available here. If we click this up icon, move up, it will move this page up one. And if we click it again to refresh this right hand panel, you can see that it's moved inside the navigation tree. And this is how we can rearrange the website's navigation. This one is move anywhere and within the site tree that you have access to. So if we wanted the training page to go into our RPG Club website, uh, we would use this function to move it there. As well, drag and drop also works. So if we just drag this to the top and give it a little time to refresh, click the page for a right hand panel to refresh, you can see training page is the number one item. It's also important to note the limitation of pages inside the Kenneco site tree and navigation. 
If we make another page under our current page, it'll change the function of how this kind of operates. Uh, let me demonstrate. So if we have training page selected, and we go ahead and make a new page, you can see that we'll get a, another dropdown located underneath training page. And that kind of changed the function of how this works in the real website navigation. Uh, so if I hit save and swap over to preview mode for the full effect, we now have a drop down underneath our training page. And you'll notice how we can open and close it. But what we can't do if we were on the real website is navigate to that original training page where we typed that original copy. The reason for this decision was for our mobile users. If we scrunch the browser down to emulate the website on a phone, you can see that the navigation is now located under the hamburger navigation tab. If a user is tapping open items, how would they be able to choose to go to the training page versus the new page we just created underneath? This whole bar is kind of selectable for thumbs, and it would be hard to denote to want to go to the training page or pages underneath the training page. And so this is the reason that we've restricted the feature that if there is a drop down, um, that page kind of becomes a little inaccessible. It's also important to note that this is as deep as the navigation can go because of that tapping. So if we wanted to create another page underneath new page, our mobile users would have to just keep tapping and it could get out of control. If the information needs to be underneath, other categories, we can move them up a level. So maybe training page becomes its entire new website and all the information becomes easily accessible and findable for every device. Uh, with just these few limitations, we have a better chance of everyone being able to find the information that they need uh, on any device that they're using. The last features of the pages applications are tabs and the second horizontal navigation. So if we go back to edit view here, uh, you can see, and if I click sandbox and click this form tab here, we can change the page name and add a subheading above the page name or change the icons in the navigation tab. So if you wanted the page title to be different from the URL, this is where we would make the change. However, if you wanted the URL to change, you would need to contact web dev or make a new page. That's to say, this would be slash sandbox because that's how we created the page. But if we wanted to rename it sandboxes, it would change what the page title appeared on the website, but the URL would still be slash sandbox. Um, that can get a little confusing, uh, but if you kind of like what we were talking about with copying a page, if you just kind of need to make a, a change like that, you'll have a much better time just clicking the plus icon and making a new We also have the properties tab, and it's actually a drop down with a couple of items. So if we go to the general tab, we can kind of see the information that was created here. Like who it was made by, when it was made, uh, and URLs that you can actually give out to people. So if we go to the training page and open the show preview, uh, this long URL we would be able to give out to anybody and they would be able to see our website even though it's in preview mode. There's also the navigation menu. Here's an opportunity to make a hyperlink route to a different page. If we wanted a navigation item to go to an external website, we select URL redirection text input. So let's go to training page or the new page under here and select the URL text input on the page we wanted to go. So let's just say for this example, we wanted it to go to google.com. We hit save there. And you can see this new icon appeared and that means that it's being redirected to a new page. So if we navigated it, navigated to it, you can see our new page would actually route to google.com.
And the last item that's available is versions, which covers who changed the page and when. Uh, this is a powerful feature that versions brings have the opportunity to roll back to any page. So say we didn't want the URL redirect on here. We could just roll back to this previous version. Well, let's check it out. And it would undo all the changes from the last kind of check-in section. Pages roll back. And so now you can see that arrow dropped. It, it reverted back to its, its previous state. So if anything ever tragically goes wrong or we need to revert to a previous form of the web page, it's very easy to with inversions. With workflow, check-ins, and checkouts, we like to say that you can't really mess up with an Akendigo CMS system. Uh, so when in doubt, just try it. And if anything goes haywire, send an email or give us a call at WebDev and we can assist. That covers the basics of how Pages works in our Akendigo CMS system. Uh, so let's get back to the training page and start building out a robust, attractive web.